All right. So, so what you do is, is you, you first synthesize either a parallel um, or a serial limb. And then you make one of the things in their serial, uh, you know, either an element or, or a system to, to make the limb hybrid. Okay? And, and so I'll show you how to kind of do this. Okay? I'm, I'm just going to take... I mean, you already know how to do it, but I, I'm going to do an example. Because uh, from here on out, there's really no new principles to teach. It's just practice. Um, whether you realize it or not. Except interconnected... Hybrid, by the way, is, is um, something I'll teach in a follow-on uh, thing. But other than that, you, you should be masters of fact at this point with, with not a whole lot more to learn. Okay, so say you've got a ground here and a stage here. And uh, this stage achieves three orthogonal rota translations and two rotations. Okay, so it's basically our flexor coupling uh, freedom space that we want to pass the moment through but have everything else be compliant. So we're just going to do a case study here. And I'll, I'll show you how it's rel relevant to what I just told you when, when I get to the, that point, okay? So uh, what's the first step? You find the freedom space. It's freedom space is this, okay? And then you find it's constraint space. It's constraint space is that. Great. All right. Um, let's say we forget about hybrid stuff for now. Let's say we just want to design a serial system, okay? So, well, this is a review of, of last lecture. What you do is you find intermediate freedom spaces. So in this case, um, here's the freedom space. It's got all these, you know, these translations and screws and everything. But forget the screws for now. Let, let's just find, let's just pick two intermediate freedom spaces. And let's, let's pick the same one twice. Hopefully you can see how these planes in a box of parallel red lines and these translations, two of them stacked on top of each other, would fit within here and could linearly combine to make this, okay? And believe it or not, these are in the parallel pyramid. Their constraint spaces are this, right? And so they're, they're totally acceptable intermediate freedom spaces. The question is, already do we know is what, what's going to result going to be um, uh, under constrained? And the answer is, yeah, we know because how many things are in here? There's four independent uh, twists in there, four independent twists in there, and this one should have five. So this will be under constrained three times, okay? But, and so you might say, well, that's bad. Why are you doing this? Well, let's keep, keep going. Let's trust me, okay? So now let's take the constraint spaces of these and synthesize them. So let's take the first constraint space, which is this. This is a constraint space that, has, that consists of two independent things in it. And we're just going to pick two wires here, okay? And so is, is, this, is this parallel module from stage to intermediate body, is that over constrained or exactly constrained? It's exactly constrained because there's two things in there we pick two things in. Same thing here. We're going to do this, the constraint space of this one below, and we're going to pick two, and we get there are two there. Okay? So great. So this is a serial system. We took the, the degrees of freedom, found the freedom space, broke it into intermediate freedom spaces, used their constraint space within the parallel pyramid, and synthesized them. This is exactly constrained. There's no over constraint here. There's no over constraint here. And there's not even limbs. So there's no over constraint from limbs because it's a serial system. Okay. And sure enough, it is under constrained by three. Remember, four plus four, uh, you know, minus five is three. And, and so is it, does it prove it? If I hold this and this fixed, can this move? Yep. It can rotate and it can translate. Into, those are the three ways this is under constrained. Okay, so you might think, well, that's a horrible design. Why would you do that? You know, especially if you want a flexor coupling, where you're attaching a motor, you know, and a shaft on here, and this is rotating at tons of RPMs. This guy's not only going to be bobbing up and down like the other design we, we did, but it's also going to be bobbing this way and rotating. It's going to be a nightmare. Well, what if we want to go back, though, and do this trick where, so we just designed a serial thing. You know, forget the, the hybrid thing. We just designed... This thing, the, the schematic of this would be a block, two springs, a block, two springs, and a block, which is basically this. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into the spring and we're going to stick a seri serial thing in there. Okay, and we're going to do it for all the springs. We're going to take this element and put like, something like that in there. Okay, and so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of the wires, one of the springs, let's say E1. 
okay, and we're going to look at its freedom space, and we're going to break it into a serial system. Okay, we're, we're going to make it into a serial This is a parallel element. We're going to make it into a serial system, just like here, right? We're going to go into this parallel element. We're going to make it into a serial system. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we're going to take element E, make it serial. So what we do is we find the freedom space, which is a bunch of intersecting red planes that intersect that line, right? We're going to break it into intermediate freedom spaces. So pick two red planes that intersect at this line. And they, of course, have translations. Um, these aren't necessarily drawn great because they're not shown. You know, it's like pretending to take that one and take that one. You know, they're, they're, they're still intersecting. But you, I just want you to look at the two separate ones. Okay? And then take their constraint space and, and, and synthesize them. Go from stage to, to this intermediate body here. So from there to there, we're going to pick, uh, you know, this, uh, this blade and that blade. Um, and, and, you know, you've got the intermediate body here. So we're turning this wire into a blade, intermediate body, a blade going to that intermediate body, except we're shaping it differently, right? Okay. So you've got to ask yourself, is this a parallel system? Yes, a blade in and of itself is not over constrained. It's just got order constraint of three. Is this one? Yes. So there's no over-constraint there. There's no over-constraint here. This whole thing is not uh, over-constrained, okay? It's exactly constrained. If we now do the same thing to E2, E3, and E4 and, and reshape stuff, move the stages around, you get something like this. So you see the, you know, these two right here essentially were equivalent to E1 with the blue line here. And these two here were equivalent to E2. And those two here are equivalent to E3. And those two here are equivalent to E4. And this is a system. Indeed, it is a system, right? Obviously, there's a ton of intermediate bodies in there. We just, we just took this system and stuck that in there, and we did the same thing there, there, and there. And so that would be the correct schematic of that. So you have you know, one, two, three, four, five intermediate rigid bodies. And um, that's not over-constrained, by the way. There's no over-constraint in any of these. And there is no over-constraint um, in the system. These two aren't over-constraining, those two aren't over-constraining. So this is exactly constrained. Problem is, is it's horrifically under-constrained. Like already, remember, this intermediate body here, which is equivalent to that guy, moves with two translations and a rotation. Okay? These guys, look at this. Will this be under-constrained, th this system right here? Sure it will, because this one has three degrees of freedom, that has three degrees of freedom, that has five degrees of freedom. So three plus three minus five is one. And what's the under constraint here? If I hold this fixed with respect to that, this guy will be able to rotate. Okay, so, so we've got this guy who has three degrees of freedom that's under, like if I hold this stage fixed with respect to this ground, this stage here will be able to translate up and down and rotate, and all these guys at the hinges will be able to rotate. So that's like horrifically under constrained, but it's not over constrained, it's exactly constrained. But now here's the thing. We've just synthesized a hybrid system, okay? And now if we shrink, this is one of the cases where we can take the rigid bodies and shrink them to point lines or curves, in this case to lines. So you can get rid of these rigid bodies and shrink them to lines. So now it's a hybrid element, okay? Now, of course, it was, it, as a system, it wasn't even over-constrained. But as an element, it can't be over-constrained because elements aren't over constrained, they just have an order of constraint. Okay, it's obviously got an order of constraint of one, right? Um, because its constraint space is just one, right? Okay, and um, is it under constraint? Well, it, the system was heavily under constraint, but because we got rid of the intermediate bodies, there's no intermediate bodies here to even have redundant degrees of freedom. And so there's no masses that can bob around or be under constraint. If I hold this fixed with respect to ground, uh, you know, because there's no stages, nothing can move around, in theory, right? And so this is, it's not considered under constraint anymore. And this is a hybrid element, okay? So what I did with this example, and by the way, this is a cool element that also just gets a pure moment. So this would be nice to stick a stage to. Here, you stick a motor and a, and a, and a shaft to rotate it. This would do fine as a flexor coupling. It would just pass the moment through stiffly and all the other motions would, would uh, be constrained. So, so this is another hybrid uh, element that uh, does just a pure moment. And it, it's clean. It's a nice planar design that can be cut. Now, in truth, though, 
because it's so under constrained when you consider the mass, and because in truth, we're, we're no longer in theory land here, these do have mass, and it's so under constrained, you will find this guy, there's mode shapes where these guys are going to be bobbing around. Um, especially the center thing will be bobbing around. And so you will have under constraint issues, so be careful. Even though in theory there's no mass, there is. Okay, so, okay. so what I taught you here is I did an example that can show you how you could take a serial limb and turn it hybrid. So you could synthesize hybrid systems that are made of hybrid limbs. At the same time, I also taught you how to go in and take a serial system and make it hybrid. But then I also taught you a way to make hybrid elements and just kind of introduce hybrid elements, okay? So that, again, that's, that's one way you could do is just design a hybrid system, get rid of the masses so there are point lines and curves, and, and you've got it. Um, again, it's risky because sometimes you can't get rid of point lines and uh, shrink masses to point lines and curves. Um, uh, and so you, you'd want to use intermediate constraint spaces to help you align them so they do shrink to point lines and curves. And you, you would do that because you don't care about intermediate uh, freedom spaces. You know, you don't care about um, whether something's under constrained or not when it's a hybrid, when it's an element, okay? Okay, so we covered a lot of ground and I brainwashed you in a lot, lots of ways that, that you don't realize is very helpful, okay, with this example. Okay, let's look at other hybrid flexor elements, okay? So we've introduced this, we might as well address this directly. Remember, there's parallel elements, serial elements, now there's hybrid elements. Here's the example I gave. Here's the schematic of it. Notice there's no rigid bodies in there, it's just points on the schematic. But in reality, there are lines at the, you know, at the intersections here, okay? Okay, um, here's, here's kind of a library of hybrid elements um, that are interesting. Again, this isn't exhaustive, this isn't complete at all. This is just to give you some helpful things and help you. I, I want you to look at these and try and analyze their freedom and constraint spaces and convince yourself I'm correct here. Um, and also just have a library in case you ever need to just swap them out and use them without having to think about it. Okay, but here's order of constraint of zero, which means it gets six degrees of freedom. This is another six degree of freedom. Uh, flexor you could do, okay, and this is a hybrid uh, system, okay, It'd be classified that way. Okay, here's here's another here's a hybrid. Uh, sorry, this isn't a system. This is a this is a hybrid element. Here's another hybrid element. Um, here's the two rigid bodies it joins, and every, it's kind of a football you know goalpost there. You know, it's a that that's a hybrid element. Um, that, that, that can be swapped out for a wire flexure where there is its constraint space. So that's kinematically equivalent to a wire. Okay. Here's, here's a hybrid element that um, uh, you know, just does a, a moment, a pure moment, and we just showed that. But here's actually the best. If you, if you actually want to do flexure coupling, okay, let, let me actually raise this up and show what you could do. Um, a really great flexure coupling is you could take um, you could take a sheet and cut it into like basically a cross like this, a flat sheet. And then what you would do is you'd fold it on these dashed lines. You take and fold them forward, and then you'd fold these two on these dashed lines, but back the other way. Okay? And what you'd get is something that looks like this. So so if you take that cross and fold the two opposing ones in different directions, what you get is, is something that can be bolted on to two different shafts. And this, this makes for a very nice uh, flexure coupling um, that very stiffly passes the moment through but is very compliant in all the other directions. Now, you've got to be careful because if there's any mass here, if, if you add, if you think of, I mean, and there is mass there, but if you think of a big rigid stage in the middle, it's very under constrained. It could, it could, um, bob up and down and it could rotate. It's basically a red plane of, um, you know, with the translation of freedom space. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's under constrained 